Hey, Sammy friends. Welcome to the Joyous Sammy with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn, and it's our Wednesday Skit Class. Today, I'll be showing three extra cards you can make with your Paper Pumpkin Kit stamp set after you're done with the kit. I'm going to hold while I flip, and we'll get started. All right, let's see if we can see everything. Welcome, welcome to today's kit class. The way our kit classes work is that if you order between Wednesday and the Friday of that kit class week, you will get the kit paper items for the kit for free when you do a $35 order and just be sure to use that hostess code. Um, today's kit, we are using our paper pumpkin stamps. Let me show you the stamps real quick and then I'll show you what actually came in the kit. Sometimes I know it's hard to see. There we go. A really great stamp set that has three awesome big sayings, two extra images, and then all these um, fun little like names. Grandpa, son, uncle, friend, brother, mom, dad. So you can change and make your cards personal. Let me show you what came in the kit to give you an idea. There we go. So it has this really fun baseball theme. We have this one, it's an all-star, and I did a friend on that one. That could be used for birthdays or anything. And there's this one, You're the Best Dad. It looks like, like a, a um, baseball plate. Is that what it's called? Home plate? Yeah, like a plate. <laughs> and then this fun grandpa, You're in a League of Your Own. And I just switched and changed whatever name I wanted to make it for whoever I needed it for. So those are the three designs that came with the kit using the stamps and the supplies. But once this, those are done and over with, um, these are the things you can make afterwards with your stamp set. All right, so let me show you these cards. I designed three of them and still with that baseball theme. I thought since Father's Day is coming up that I would want to give you a couple of extra ideas and I've supplemented it with some other stamp sets as well or dies I should say. So I'm using the hats off inside here. They have dies. I did use the dad for this one but you can always use the dad that came in the paper pumpkin kit if that's all you have. And then I've used this die and this die. For these ones and then I'm using the handsomely suited or the suit and tie dies so I use the center strip it's kind of like the button line that's what I'm gonna call it and then the buttons as well to make this fun jersey card and I've used just oodles and oodles of dies. So I'll tell you as we go, and also be sure to follow and check on my blog afterwards for all the list of measurements, supplies, and links of how to buy them. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today's card. Let me show you this one. This one's super fun. It's just lots and lots of layers. And I've done it a little bit untraditional as far as how my measurements are. I usually will do more of a border so that there'd be a border on the top and the bottom and on the sides. But this time I had my lengths go as long as the card. Let me go ahead and show you and give you the tips for this one. So I'm using a Knight of Navy card base and I have it measuring and scored this way instead. The four and a quarter by 11 and scored a five and a half. Let me grab my bone folder. We'll get that one ready to go. And then I am using this paper that is now retired just recently. It was part of a specialty paper, but Stampin' Up! does have a wood paper in the In Good Taste DSP. So if you don't have this one, then that's what I would recommend using instead. Or if you get the kit from me, I'll cut you up a piece and you'll have this one ready to use. So that's one of our pieces. We have two basic whites, but they will measure differently. So make sure you line them up to see. One will be a little bit bigger than the other. Let's make sure I have it the right way. So this one should measure the same length as this one. Oh, I think both of mine are wrong, maybe, unless I have another piece. These are both too short. One second, I'll grab a piece of paper and we'll fix that real quick. Let me go ahead and show you a couple more items. 
So I've already pre-stamped this one in the Night of Navy, and I'll cut that out. I have my Poppy Parade, my Misty Moonlight, and I have a couple of these pieces so we can make our bat on that. And I've die cut that Night of Navy hat. I'm gonna show you, I tried to stamp on there and you kind of see how it looks. So if you like that look better and could just use that stamp that came in the kit, or if you wanna use the extra little dad piece that will go on the top of the hat as well. Totally up to you. So we need to stamp that one and let me grab that piece of basic white real quick. All right. So the measurement for this one should have been four, which is a very typical measurement for card fronts and card insides, but then we want it to go to the five and the half. So just a little bit longer, like that. Okay, problem solved. All right. Let's go ahead and do our stamping first. I'm gonna grab this cute little piece there and we are going to grab the dad. Kinda sounds silly when I say it that way. I know I'm at a different time today. It's kind of crazy. We're almost into the summer and kids have different schedules than usual. So I went a little bit earlier. If you're here, I would love to hear your comments. If not, catch me on the replay or watch me on YouTube. Either way. So this is our Poppy Parade. I'll just usually call it Poppy, as you'll hear me refer to it as we go throughout. All right, let's ink up the dad and line it up. And usually when I do these ones, I usually will stamp it first and then die cut. But since we're using photopolymer, I can still line it up really well. All right, our dad's ready to go. Let's close up this one. it away and then let's stamp our bats so there's two sides of a piece of paper and we want the side the wood side is going to be facing down we're going to flip it over and if you're using that in good taste one you'll see a totally different side on that side as well and we're going to grab our bat it doesn't matter what color you use for this one i'm just going to use that misty moonlight and I'm gonna stamp two bats on the back of our paper here, our wood paper. Let's ink it up. Go one and two. And these don't have to be perfect because these will not be seen at all. We are just using that stamp to create the bat shape. Let's grab our paper snips and start cutting. I'm gonna just trim this off so it's easier for me to cut and then we'll work our way around it. For the secret of this one, you wanna just make sure you get that handle look. That gives that narrow to going out for the bat. So I'm not a huge baseball fan, I know, I know. But I used to play it like t-ball as a kid growing up. So I'm super familiar with it. And I have friends who've played. I have been to a lot of minor league baseball games. And also just a couple of professional baseball games. I went to one when I was in Minnesota. I think those Minnesota Twins maybe. And then I've gone to a Rockies game as well in Denver. So I don't have a favorite baseball team. I would love to know what yours is though, if you have one. So Stamping Up usually has a plethora of floral type stamps and very girly ones. And so I love it when they come up with these awesome, more masculine images. This would be great for softball as well, for girls but we will use these for some awesome dad cards. Okay. Oh, Phyllis says she actually likes fussy cutting out. It isn't too bad, right? Look at these cool bats, that wood on there. I don't know if you can see that, just makes it look like a real bat. I just love it. All right, we'll set those aside. And the 
next part that we need as prep is just to cut out this part. I've stamped it in that Knight of Navy, and what I'm gonna do though is not include the of all time. So we'll just keep on cutting around or underneath this little swoosh line, just like this. And then when you do these kind of bubble fussy cutting, you wanna use the very inner part of your snips and you don't wanna cut it all the way down. And you're just gonna make kind of rounded movements with it. Kind of like bubble letters. Do you remember you used to making those as a kid? Or even now still? There we go. That looks awesome. Okay, I think we're ready to assemble. All of our main parts are done and ready for us. Let's go ahead. Oh, I lied. One more part right here. Let me grab this one. I'm gonna toss this underneath. I can get ready to stamp on that one and make a mess. And we're gonna grab the hat. So there's a hat that came with this stamps as well, right there. Go ahead and peel it off and open up our misty moonlight. Let me give it so I can see me where I'm inking maybe, huh? Okay. And this is just gonna be randomly inked. So you wanna change up your angles, have some that aren't completely stamped on, even turn them upside down if you want. Some of it's gonna be covered up so you don't need to have full on images. That one going down, and maybe we'll just do a little brim on that one. Okay, there we go. Now I think we're ready to assemble. And there's just a couple of fun tips I want to tell you about how to assemble this one. So we're going to go ahead and start with our Missy Moonlight onto our Poppy Parade. And I'm using that liquid glue because I want to be able to move this after I put it down. Because the chances are good I won't do it perfect. I'm giving myself some, a little bit of wiggle room and freedom. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and attach that to... Well, we'll get our white one first and we'll attach these two together. Just like that. Kind of move it a little bit. Okay. And we'll attach this to our card base. I'm telling you just lots of layers today to make this card fabulous that on our card base. Remember that it's going to go all the way up to that score line, to that top there. So no borders on the bottom or the top, like that. And we can now attach this one. You want to give yourself about a quarter of an inch space right here. You see that line? So we have that layer showing through. Um, let's grab our basic white. Make sure this is a the size that we want for the inside. Yep. And we'll just throw that in the inside right now. Because this is Knight of Navy, it is a dark card base. So you definitely want to have some basic white or a lighter shade. I could even do like a crumb cake inside of here, and that would have been fine. Okay. All right. Let's get ready for our bats. So we're gonna put, you could put your bats either on the top or the bottom. I did my bottom for the first one, so we're gonna go ahead and do that again. And just gonna make a crisscross with them. Once you have them placed where you want them to be, grab your dimensionals and put one dimensional in the center there, just like that. You wanna take off the backing so it's ready for you. Then we're gonna grab our greatest, you're the greatest. And we're gonna put dimensionals just on the two ends, nothing in the center. See what I'm doing there? I'm going to go ahead and flip it and cover up that dimensional in the center and push those two sides down. That looks awesome. We're also gonna grab a dimensional for our dad and put that on our hat. So that pops up just a little bit there. Then if you look at your hat, you'll see that there's this kind of like a score or an, a stitch line right there. We are going to just bend that. You can use your bone folder if you want to, 
or just leave it as that. I was told men's hats like to have that nice natural bend to it. They don't like to wear a flat hat. So you want this to look a little bit more real. You can go ahead and add and fold that and then don't put adhesive on the bottom. If you want this to lay flat, feel free to go ahead and put adhesive all over it. But I'm gonna have this one come over on our bat a little bit. And then have this part kind of open up just like that. Look how awesome that turned out. Two dad hats, you're the greatest. Love it. All right, let's go ahead and go on to our next one. Let's do, let's see, this one is, should be our jersey one. This one is super fun. Um, the kit itself came with this really cool stripey paper. Let me show you. So if you don't have, this is the Dandy Garden DSP. See, that's that DSP, and this is the stripey paper it came with. So if you don't have that, you can go ahead and just use the card that came from your kit instead to make the jersey look. I'm using a thick Whisper White card base because that's my favorite kind of card base when using white. Like that. And then I have lots of little buttons. Hopefully I don't lose them, huh? I have our Dandy Garden DSP that creates these nice stripes. It's like that. And on the back you can see our dandelions there. See? So funny. Totally would have never guessed to use this for um, the purpose of a card for baseball. Who would have thunk, right? All right. You put that there. So what we need to do is grab our triangle. You'll have a little square in yours. This is a two and a half by two and a half inch square, or I just used my um, square dies and cut it out that way. Then I went from corner to corner and cut it out. We're gonna put just a little bit of glue on the bottom here and not in the center. And then we're gonna put it on our piece of DSP in the middle. And you could kind of eyeball it. If you want to count your stripes, you can count your stripes. You can measure it out if you want to see where the true center is. I'm not too picky. That looks pretty good to me. And then we're going to grab our one inch circle punch. Stampin' Up! no longer sells this, so hopefully you have it in your craft room. And then we're just going to go ahead and take this in the center and just do a little less than a half even, maybe a quarter of a punch to make that little shirt look and punch both of them through. Then we're going to go ahead and attach this to our card base. You see how the white underneath it now becomes the undershirt look. Attach that. This DSP is the same size as the card front, so it's at four and a quarter by five and a half. And then we're gonna grab our fun little strip here. And we'll put a little bit of glue. Don't go all the way down to the bottom though because we'll end up cutting some of it off, I think. <laughs> We're gonna go a little bit over that corner piece where we had his shirt on the top. Yeah, and press it down. And I was right, see? We don't wanna glue that all the way down. Grab your paper snips then, and we'll flip it over and just cut off that extra using the paper as our guide. We go. Next, we have all of these cute little buttons. So, what I like to do is just go ahead and grab some glue and make some dots. You can measure it out if you want them to be exact. There are little stitches here, so you can even count the stitches if you wanted to. I'm not too, too picky, but I do need to grab my take a pick tool. This tool makes it way easier to grab little things such as buttons. So we're gonna grab it and just stick it right there. Usually I use one other hand to help place it down so that it grabs. Like that. If you're not a blue fan, blue stripes, there is or was a red stripe paper. Um, and if I have a lot of Wednesday's kit classes made up, I'll have to use that instead. Um, and it is from the Retired Pampered Pets 
DSP that just retired the beginning of this month. And so if you have any of that handy, you can even use that for the stripes. But baseball uniforms are just known for like, like their awesome stripes, right? I did go ahead and use the star stitch dies and I've cut out a poppy parade one. Go ahead and use your liquid glue just to attach that. And we're almost done. We just need to do a little bit of stamping. Set that right about there. We'll let that dry, set it aside. Next, we need to grab our scrap of basic white and a piece of our Knight of Navy and our Knight of Navy ink and the same All-Star. You could also stamp on another piece of paper, the um, All-Star Dad, All-Star Son, and put that right underneath it as well. I'll show you how we're doing that with our last card. All right, let's grab the stamp for this one. We'll get that inked up. And what we're doing for this card is we're doing a double fussy cut. So we're gonna give ourselves enough space to give an outline. Perfect. And we're gonna fussy cut this one, glue it onto this one, and then fussy cut that out. I know, it's kind of crazy, but we really do like the way that will look to have that double border there. So grab your paper snips and start cutting. Just like that around it. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that white border. In fact, I'm going to cut off the extra real quick so it's easier for me to move. There we go. I'm just going in a bubble-like motion, so kind of rounding the edges. I'm gonna come down just like that. Okay, there we go. Next, let's add some glue to this one on the back and attach it to our Knight of Navy. And this is just a scrap that I'd used earlier today. I'll just push that down and cut around that one. Hopefully my images are doing okay today. My son is at a online field trip right now using our internet as well. So I'm kind of competing with him. So hopefully there's no issues. Yeah, so cut off these extra. Hopefully everything is nice and clear. And if not, I super duper apologize. And know that my son is just at the White House right now on his online field trip. <laughs> it's for a good cause, right? Okay. So there that one is. Now we just need to add some dimensionals to the back. I suggest at least two. And we'll attach that to our star. Just like that. Perfect. There we go. Two Jersey baseball cards for our all-star. Love it. Super fun, right? All right, let's go ahead and grab our last card. And this one is our easiest. It's the You're the Best Dad. And again, you can change that to whatever saying you want from this kit or the stamp set. And then I've just had to have the same layers or same color of layers and we've stamped on the background to make the bats for this one. Oh, yep, Phyllis says it's clear, but it's just freezing up every so now and then. Kind of like a hiccup, right? I thought I saw that. So weird. We're gonna have to figure out a new summer schedule once kids are at home the whole time. We'll see and let you know what times and days I end up stamping this summer. All right, let's grab our bone folder. Gonna give that a nice good crease. And then I've used our stitch rectangles to make these two sizes and the Night of Navy and the Misty Meadow sorry, Misty Moonlight. And then you could either keep it on here layered nice and even, and that looks awesome. However, I'm kind of crazy and I like to have mine kind of go at different ways. So when I get ready to glue that on, you'll see I'll just angle it just a little different. But first we need that bat. 
again, and I'm going to do this one in the night of navy this time. Just to let it stand out a little bit more. And it's going to go off your edges, so make sure you have paper underneath because we want it to look like it's going on all over. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. Okay. So grab your bat and just start stamping. Put a couple images. Make sure you go upside down a couple times. Go at different angles. Have a full bat right there. Maybe just a handle on this one. The center part's gonna be covered up for the most part. And we'll do that one crossing over there. That looks pretty good. Next one, we're gonna need that poppy parade again. And I've die cut a scalloped circle using our layering circles that have both regular circles and these scalloped ones in multiple sizes. So great dies to have if you don't already have that in your um, collection. And let's grab that last stamp for this one. The You're the best. We also need to grab dad. Should I do dad, grandpa? I think I might switch this one up and do a grandpa card again. That will be fun. We're going to go ahead and ink that up in the poppy parade and place it there in the center. Perfect. Love that one. All right, let's put our poppy away. I grab my Knight of Navy out one more time. Ink. And let's grab that grandpa. And just a scrap of that Misty Moonlight. Stamp grandpa on there. And let's cut grandpa up. Sounds really bad when you were using names like grandpa and dad. <laughs> They're just the words. Don't worry. We love grandpa. I'm just going to just a very simple straight cut. Just with my paper snips even. Don't need to grab a trimmer for this one. It's just so little. All right. It is so little that if you have many dimensionals, I recommend those. Let me see if I have mine handy. There we go. If you don't have these, you can cut a dimensional in half. And that work would work just as well. I'm going to put two of these mini ones on there. And let's attach that underneath. You're the best. Oh, not upside down, though. <laughs> that would be some good dad joke humor there, wouldn't it? You're the best, Grandpa. Love it. Okay, put our ink away. And let's start doing our layers. Grab some glue. And again, you can have this either just regular up and down or angle it a little bit. And I've used a larger rectangle stitch die for this one and then just a slightly smaller size for this Misty Moonlight one. Flip that over. I'm gonna make this playful. There you go. Then we have a piece of the denim ribbon, which carried over into this catalog, and it's one of my favorites. Um, and we're gonna just fold that in half. It's about, I wanna say five inches. Fold it in half, flip over your scallop, and we're gonna attach it here to the back using the dimensionals. And then we're gonna continue and add even more dimensionals on this one. If you did get your paper pumpkin kit, did you see those amazing new directions? They are so good. They're in color now. I should grab those so you can see them too. Um, and they have images that show you how to put the dimensionals on there. It is so cool. All right, you're the best grandpa. So let's put this one right about there. And you can trim that down if you want to or if you like it long, totally up to yourself. This is the opal rounds. I kind of thought these looked like baseballs, like cut in half. I know they're kind of glittery, so it's kind of not totally guy, but it works. I'm gonna grab just a couple of those and we'll do some here at the top. 
like some random baseballs just kind of flying out there. And let me throw one down here. All right, there we go. You're the best dad. You're the best grandpa. I have those cards. And then we have our Jersey All-Star card as well that we made for this kit. And our fun You're the Greatest Dad hat card. I do have some extra things I want to show you really quick before we go. So I'll keep that on screen so you can see it. But I next month for my penny tutorials, um, our theme is with the hats off stamp set. So I've made two awesome items to add to that tutorial that you get for free as a thank you gift when you order from me. Um, let me show you what's going to be part of mine. So I've made also this cute little hat card and that fun tag card for dad as well. You can get all the directions for these on that tutorial when you order from me in June, which believe it or not is next week. Crazy, right? June is just right around the corner. And before you go, because I told you how awesome this was, I just have to show you. That's how excited I am. I know usually I'm like done right here. So hang on there. These are the instructions this time. And look at this. You open it up and it gives you, not in words, but let me get closer you can see. Little spots so you know exactly where to put the dimensionals little um, ink and the word to use and a little image even for the little bow. I was just super impressed with this directions this time. So if you're not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I highly recommend doing that. I'll have that link in my comments below on YouTube. All right, you guys, I think that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this fun Paper Pumpkin extra cards that you can make using the stamp set after all of your paper products are gone from the kit. Happy stamping, everyone. Goodbye.